Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Today we're doing a new series. We're kicking off a new series. Why are we doing this whole thing, uh, Christmas at the Movies edition? Why are we doing this? Well, um, I, I really believe that we talked about this as a staff months ago, and we said, okay, why would we do something like this? Because I know that people can get funky when you start playing movies and then preach. But I'm going to give you at least some understanding so that, you know, I arrest any thoughts that you have right now that can get kind of, you know, freaked out about why, was, why is my church showing movies? That's not cool. Why are they there? They're of the devil. No, no, no. Uh, it's, 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 it, it, let, let me just be honest with you. Um, God was the creator of all things. God had the big idea of all genre of movies before the movies did. He had, he had the big idea. He was the creator of it. He had more insight than Hollywood does today. And you know what? When you read the Bible, just think this way. The Bible has a script. It has a plot, and there's a story. Well, guess what? So does your life. And so God already had all these different genres that existed. Let's just take a genre from the movies. Somebody gave me, one, what's one of your favorite genres when you watch movies? Quickly. Action, okay, action. How about David and Goliath, right? What if, what if they just made a David and Goliath movie? What if they did like the real 300 with Gideon? Like for real. I mean, you want to talk about action? Gideon. He starts out with 30,000 guys and God says, mm, mm, mm. And then he keeps dropping it, mm, mm. Dropping it, mm, mm. Drop, mm, mm. 300 guys. And he slaughters, he slaughters his enemy with 300 guys. So, so don't ever be tripped out or tripped up when God tells you to do something that doesn't make any sense, like giving towards the, you know, <laughs> the sound system. It'll never make sense. Okay, what's another genre? Come on. Sci-fi. Sci-fi. Let's just take the Tower of Babel <laughs> or the Tower of Terror. I don't know which one. But they're all building these Legos, right? Everyone's building, building, building. And God looks down from heaven and he says, what in the world? Are they? they were all in unity. And God looked at them and said, man, these men can do anything. We know that they were building something so big that they wanted to reach what? Heaven. And God said, you know what? I'm going to change their language. That's sci-fi. Can you imagine? Oh, no, 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 no. They're just like, that's sci-fi right there. Okay, give me another genre. Quick. Comedy. The disciples. <laughs> just check it out. Jesus is walking with Peter. They're going into town. Jesus gets turned away. And then Jesus really kind and soft and just like, that's okay, God bless you, you know, whatever. And he leaves. And Peter's like, Jesus, do you want me to call fire from heaven and we'll just make barbecue today right here, <laughs> right? And Jesus is like, what the, what's wrong with you, man? I didn't come to take life. I came to what? Give life. That's some comedy right now. I can tell you some other comedy stuff. Another genre, quick, quick, quick. Huh? Romantic. <laughs> and it had to be the girl too, huh? How about Ruth and Boaz? How so? Like, oh my God, so romantic. Yeah. Did you guys, did you guys ever, I know it went all over Facebook and everything. I was going to use it, but I'm like, nah, it's already used. But do you guys remember that story about, uh, well, not a story, but they put like this, this whole list of dating, and, and they took the, the name Boaz. Everybody say Boaz. <laughs> okay, so don't get funky in here, okay, like the 8 a.m. And so, and so they said, you know what, if you're going to date someone, make sure that he's not a broke ass. Make sure he's not a dumb ass. Make sure he's not a lazy ass. You know, make sure he's, well, anyways, you get the picture, right? And so, romantic, there you go. What's another one? Come on. What else? Thriller. Jesus versus Satan. Oh, we know that. Thank you. Yeah, amen. And he's still winning. Think about it. Think about the suspense. Satan comes and he comes to think that he's going to tear up God's plan. Listen, when God puts his, his attention, his focus, his eyes on something called you, God will get you to your destiny as long as you let him, right? We knew that Jesus was obedient up, up until the point of death. And then there was those silent three days where everyone was just watching, suspense. But on the third day, what happened? Jesus rose again, and he conquered death, hell, and what? The grave. So he gave us new life. How about drama? 
Anybody got drama in this church right now? Anybody going through some drama? Yeah, you're sitting next to them right now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> drama. Let's just take this drama. From the beginning, let's take heaven, okay? Think about it. The worship leader, once again. The worship leader, okay? Satan, who was at then called Lucifer, Lucifer all of a sudden has some drama moment, and he begins to get with a, a groupie of church people, <laughs> He, and, and they start calling meetings in their house with church people, and they all start doing this. Flap, 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 right? I wish I had something to flap around. And they start talking stuff, and, and you know, and the pastor this, and, and the leaders that, and the church this, and that. And they got nothing better to do than to flap away, right? That's what Satan did, okay? He was Lucifer, angel of light, into angel of darkness. And he starts telling these angels, hey, here's what we can do. Why don't we... You know, because I, I know we respect God. I, I know that, you know, we're under authority, you know, and everything. But, but what if, what if we just get together and we start our own band? Can you imagine if we just started our own band? I mean, we can call ourselves the Lobos or something. I don't know. And, and we'll go big. We'll go, we'll go bomb. We'll go, we'll go, we'll go awesome. And, and, and Lucifer, think about this. Think about drama. He's able to convince a third of the angels to agree with him and turn their back on heaven, turn their back on God and say, let's go, Lucifer, who now becomes Satan. Can you imagine what church service looked like the following Sunday in heaven when a third of the angels were missing? That's drama. So I arrested all of your ideas that showing movies and preaching is not really an issue because God had all the genres before Hollywood did. Amen? Amen? So let's watch this first clip.
You know, I'm starting with Charlie Brown because you know what? I really believe that it's seasons like this where people start getting a little bit funky. For, listen, some for valid reasons. For example, I'm just going to be up front with you. For, for our family, it's a death. My niece yeah, died at 22 years old, was killed instantly, and, and to this day on our holidays, it, it hits us hard and all these emotions begin to just build up and we just start you know what asking questions again like man if she was here now she would be this old and and she'd probably be doing this by now and she was going to school to be a nurse and she had such a great and so all these thoughts start coming in what begins to happen is when when you have these issues that you haven't addressed uh, it, it, it begins to dictate how you're going to feel the rest of the the week the month uh, the holiday season, and, and so there's, there's real stuff, there's real struggles that you and I deal with. Here you have Charlie Brown who is unhappy, and, and he just can't seem to find this happiness, and he's going around, he's complaining, and, and he's telling everyone how he feels, and, 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 and you know what, woe is me, and, and he, you know, using his sarcasm, hey, um, did you send me a Christmas card? No, I didn't send you anything. Like, uh, he just feels like nobody likes him. As a matter of fact, Linus says to him, something, he says to Linus, something must be wrong with me. Something must be wrong with me. And I really want, I want to encourage and empower you that as we prepare and launch this holiday season, that we would begin to think about how can we create the best Christmas ever as a family because as you're hearing the the video there the storyline says that you know what you're the charlie browniest that i've ever known who can literally take an amazing season like christmas and turn it into a problem the question i have for you today is will you be that problem this christmas will you be that issue because we all have issues just look at your neighbor and say you got some issues man Yeah, and then, you know, turn back at them and say, you know, so do you, so chill. Yeah. We, we all have issues that we deal with. The question is, is when will you deal with those issues? When will you address those issues? When will you confront those issues? Or are we just putting them away for the next holiday season only to bring them back out? We need to start changing some things in our life so that we can stop having this cycle of issues and start having cycles of healing and breakthrough and joy. Now, there, I don't really believe, I think as I'm maturing and growing, and I don't know if it's doctrinally, you know, correct or not. I got two pastors here. Oh, well, I got the mic today, so y'all just receive. Uh, <laughs> But I, I've learned this, that there's no such thing as finding true happiness. I just don't believe it now. You know why? Because, you know what, I've, 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 I have found my happiness in things. I believe that happiness is a moment. So, you know, you get a new pair of shoes and you're happy. Yeah, but like two days later, five days later, you don't give a rip. And then you're just, you're all bummed out again. You get a new car, you're happy, and you're like, I finally got the car of my dreams. I finally got the house of my dreams. I finally got the, and, and it just doesn't, listen, you can't find happiness in things, nor can you find happiness in people. There's no person on planet Earth that is happy 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If that's you, please give me what you're smoking because I love to be happy like that. <laughs> Seriously. It, it, there's no such thing as that, but but here now let's go let's go theological, okay? But I truly believe that beyond happiness, which is momentarily, you can find joy. And joy is what we're looking for. Jesus says, "The joy of the Lord is my what strength." I need to find joy, not happiness. As a matter of fact, joy is the fruit of the spirit. It didn't say you are to have peace, love, happiness. It said you are to have peace, love, joy. And so I want to just wreck your head for a little bit because you know what? This season, we're not going to look for happiness. This season, we're going to look for joy, and his name is Jesus. And they both start with J's. I didn't plan that. That was just spontaneous. Joy. I would say joy. We need to find joy in him again. Because you know what? You're going to have this pursuit of happiness, which is not even true either. There's no such thing as pursuit for happiness. At the end of the day, it's empty again. You know, if only we had a bigger church, I'd be happy. No, I wouldn't. I'd have more problems. 
or a $74,000 bill. So my joy is in him. Charlie Brown was trying to find happiness in people. Did you give me a card? No, I sent you a card. Man, nobody likes me. And, and we start having these, these issues. And, and my, my prayer is that we, would, that we would get away from that mindset so that we can really super enjoy. Now, how can we do that? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tell you this real quickly. I want you to think this way. What if this Christmas we plan for? Number one, let's, let's just start with this. Everybody say imperfection. imperfection. What if you just realize that, you know what? You're not perfect. And neither are your family, your friends, your coworkers, or your church. What if we just decided that, you know what? I don't go to the perfect church. I don't, I don't have the perfect family. I think that we get all tripped up when we're trying to be perfect. But what if we just went ahead and embraced the fact that we have imperfections, not only in us, but there's also imperfections in others? What if we just plan for imperfections this Christmas? How about another one? Uh, this is a favorite one. This happened to me at the uh, 8 a.m. service. Ever say interruption. I was preaching at the eight and really good. I was like, ah, ah, ah. And then my mic went off. I'm like, ah. And then I forgot my train of thought. I'm like, dang, where was I at now? And then we had to change microphones. And it's kind of awkward, right? Because everyone's just staring at you like, okay, what's he going to say next? And then I jumped onto something else that had probably didn't even make sense. But what if I just accepted that, you know what, I'm going to plan for interruptions because right now I already know my issue. My issue is that I have a sound system that's going cray cray. It's probably demon possessed. I don't know, but I have to go ahead and just deal with it and acknowledge that we have some issues right now. And yes, I may be interrupted as I'm going, but God's presence, person, and power will still be here. What if you started saying that, yes, right now there's an interruption in my life, in my work, in my family, but, but man, I, 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 I'm just going to, I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to look for joy. I'm going to seek for joy. I'm going to stop trying to find happiness because you know what? We're not growing and we're not changing because we have this myth that happiness is what we need when joy is what you want. Okay, so there's, there's imperfection, there's interruption, and this is one of my favorite ones, and it's called inconvenience. Say inconvenience. inconvenience. Yeah, it's very inconvenient at this time to break everything down, God. Not that he did it, but, you know, it all broke. On Christmas, right? Like it's very inconvenient that... Whatever, you finish the, the sentence of something that's happening in your life right now that's very inconvenient. Like you weren't expecting. It's kind of like, have you ever saved up money for Christmas? And you're like, man, okay, we're going to save $1,000 and we're going to, this year we're not going to get in debt. You save 1000 bucks, and literally two weeks before Christmas, your car breaks down and it's $999.99. <laughs> Yeah, and taxes on top of that. <laughs> Have you ever had that? That's, that's inconvenient when you already had a plan to take care of your family. And you know what it does? It trips you up. And so uh, inconvenient. Here's, here's one that probably a lot of people are, are dealing with either now or will. It's faithful. Every same Possibility. You know, there's so many stories that we're hearing right now of impossible situations of people being sick with cancer, people in hospitals, people that are going to, through some major struggles. But how many know that with, with every imperfection, with every interruption, with every inconvenience, and with every impossibility, this can become God's invitation to you this Christmas saying, but draw close to me and I will draw close to you. You see, you can, take, you can take all these things and turn them into a God opportunity. 
you can decide that, you know what, this Christmas, I'm not going to just continue to allow all these issues. I'm not going to turn everything into a problem. I'm going to start looking at things with a God perspective, and I'm going to start seeking God, and he's going to go ahead and take my imperfections, and he's going to perfect everything that concerns me. He's going to take my interruptions, and you know what, he's going to turn into a Holy Ghost thing for me. He's going to take my, my inconvenience, and you know what, he's going to make things a little bit more convenient for me, not because I'm his favor but because I'm seeking him he's going to take my impossibilities and he's going to say you know what maybe impossible with you Mauricio maybe impossible for you Pastor Wiley but with me all things are possible because I'm God are you with me today But that's, that's a choice that we have to make or you can just continue being the Charlie Browniest in this world always just <sighs> Just down, always just unhappy, uh, sad. And, and, and listen, it's real. The struggle is real. And so there's a guy in the Bible named Jacob who, who also struggled with this stuff, guys. This stuff is real. I'm not saying deny your pain. I'm not saying deny your issue, deny your problem, because I promise you, the issues are faithful every single day just like bills are. They're faithful. They always show up on time. They're never late. Let me take you through this verse here. I want you to go with me to Genesis chapter 25. Because there was a guy by the name of Jacob who had all kinds of issues. He had many issues. But let me tell you, the reason I want to bring Jacob up is because some of us right now, we're looking at our life and we're looking at the struggle that we're dealing with and we think it'll never change. We think it will never happen. Or we're thinking, how is it going to be possible? You know, and trust me, I face those on a weekly basis. Weekly. Weekly. But, but I have to turn to him. I have to turn to, I must turn to him. So look at this. So just so we can relate to someone, okay? So this guy, Jacob, dealt with stuff since he was in his mama's womb. Sometimes we, we, we're born with stuff and we struggle with stuff because we have the mindset that, man, I was born with this depression. And you know what? I don't think anyone has the answer, but there, this is a broken world, and in a broken world, broken things happen. But how many know that God can take your bent and he can straighten you out again, right? Because he's a God who's perfect. And so look at this. So Rebecca, verse 21, Rebecca couldn't have children, so Isaac prayed um, to the Lord. Everybody say, Isaac prayed to the Lord. So there was an issue here, and they couldn't have babies, and so Isaac prayed to the Lord for her, and the Lord answered his prayer, and his wife, Rebecca, became pregnant. Now, the babies, everybody say the babies, so how many know that when, when, when you take something to God, God can double the blessing, okay? You can do it yourself and get half the blessing out of your talent, but I want the double blessing, and so she didn't just get one, she got twins, Okay, so the babies, everybody say struggled. struggled. With who? With each other. Look, drama already. Siblings aren't even out, and they're already having a struggle. This is, and they, they had this struggle with each other inside her, and she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to ask the Lord what she should do. Who did she go to? When she was going through a struggle, who she talked to? Exactly. And she said, Lord, what's going on? Why is this happening to me? So she went and she asked the Lord, and the Lord said to her, two nations are in your body. Two tribes that are now inside you will be separated. One nation will be stronger than the other. The older son will serve the younger. The time came for Rebecca to have her babies, and there were twin boys in her body. The first one to come out was red. His whole body was covered with hair. It's jacked up, huh? <laughs> Be happy with your appearance right now. You're good. It's like Chewbacca or something. <laughs> That's what I always picture when I read this. See, it's a movie, I'm telling you. And so, and so covered with hair, okay? And so they named him what? Esau. And then his brother came out, his hand was holding onto Esau's what? So he's known to be the heel grabber. The brother already had some issues. 
in his womb. You know what he wanted? He wanted to pull him out so that he can go forward first. And, and we know what Jesus says about that, right? The last will be what? First, and the first shall be what? Last. And so already Esau has this struggle with him. He's got this identity crisis even before his birth because he wants the birthright of his brother who's scheduled to be born before him, and the firstborn will always get the birthright blessing. And so now he's knowing that he's going to have to live with this, this issue that I'll never be the first. I will never be the blessed. I will never be the chosen. And he's dealing with this identity crisis. And so since his birth, he's trying to pull his brother. He's been a deceiver and a schemer right from the beginning of the get-go. And so he was named Jacob. Everybody say Jacob. Jacob. And Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah had them. So here you have this egotistic guy that is having an issue with not being able to be first. That's what happened with Satan. He wanted to be first. He wanted entitlement. He wanted position. He wanted to be the man. He didn't want anyone else to have any title position. He didn't like the fact that God was over him. He didn't like the fact that God had order over him. He didn't like the fact that God already had a plan for him. And then what happens is, like what you and I do, is that God creates a story in our life, and then we begin to alter it and change it. But it's like I I tell everyone every single time, you got to learn how to stay your lane because even though you try to exit your lane, you're always going to have to come back because the finish line will never change. It doesn't change. So you can fight, you can argue, and you can wrestle all you want because at the end of the day, even though a Jacob, which will read, wrestle with God with this issue and struggle, at the end of the day, God still blessed him. But let's look at what happened here. Because I want us this Christmas to enter in and to press in as hard as we can to really see our Christmas season be something that will catapult us into 2017 with real change. The problem with, I lost my marker. It's okay, I got gold. It's Christmas. The problem, someone can find, oh, there's my marker. So Jacob had a major issue, and that issue was he never let you know who you're talking to. Because here's the deal. Jacob was three people. There was the future, me. There was me, and then there's the fake me. Okay? And most people fall into one of these categories. You're either you or you're a fake you. How's it going? Everything's awesome, man. And listen, I've done that too before where I'm going through stuff and people are asking me, how you doing? I'm like, (laughs) it's just, praise Jesus. Has anyone ever done that? Come on, we've all done it. How you doing, pastor? Man, this this is awesome. But but inside I got issues. I got challenges. I I got stresses. I got... Ah, but let me tell you something. With every imperfection, with every uh, uh, interruption, with every inconvenience, with every impossibility, that is an invitation from God Almighty to say, okay, now come. Come. And that's the hardest part because we've learned to try to figure it out ourselves. Jacob, all his life, he tried to fix everything. And you know what? His, his, His meaning of happiness, which he learned finally at one point of his life, he had a lot of money. He had two wives, he had kids, he had possessions, he had everything only to find himself alone again. And it's when you, it's when you find yourself alone that your real you comes out. The real you. But when we're in front of people again, we got to go back to the fake me. No, we need to go from even me to the future me. And I'm praying that in Christmas there will be a future us a future with hope amen here was the internal issue his struggle <laughs> let's watch the video again just to kind of change the mood a little bit but, you know and i love this because you know what god wants us to seek him in order to find him he wants us to seek him in order to find him and i know that he would do us a disservice if all he did was bless us every time i mean think about it um, Yoli, you have, you know, 
Olivia, who's nine months right now, but she's going to be walking soon. And, and, and it would be a disservice if you carried her till she's like 21 years old. That would be jacked up, huh? You know that whole footprints picture that you see at the bed? I'm like, dude, come on, walk, bro. What's wrong with you? And so God says, seek me with all your heart, and, and, and you're going to find me. Like any parent, you want your child to walk one day, right? I would hope, right? And so think about it. Um, Olivia, can I use you? Uh, I mean, Yoli, can I use you? Come up here. So let's just say that I'm your dad and you're the, the little girl. Uh, when, when Alexis was small, my daughter, uh, I, used to, I used to love teaching them how to, how to walk and how to use the potty. I taught both my kids. And, and I said, okay, because I want the best for them, you know. I wanted them to be on the potty at five months old. You know, I was just like, come on, you can do this. You're smarter than that. You're a Ruiz, you know. And, and so, you know, like any father, let's just pretend you're a child, okay. And remember when you start teaching your children how to walk, you, you kind of always do this, right. You put your hands out and just start walking towards me. And they, they start, yeah, go for it, go for it. And the baby keeps coming and they think they're coming. And, and then the parent keeps going, why? Because the parent wants a little bit more steps. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going. And the baby's about to wobble. It's like, okay, no, no, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. And then before you know it, you're on the other end of the house and you're just rooting for your child saying, yes, yes. That's what God the Father does with you and me. He says, come and seek me. And you know what? When you thought you couldn't take two steps, you actually took five steps. When you thought you couldn't take five steps, you actually took ten steps. But God is saying, if you keep seeking me, you will find me. I will be right there with you. When you fall, I'll pick you back up and you got to start walking again. And you got to start going again. But I'm picking you back up. And he says, but find me. Seek me with all your heart. And you're going to see that God now will take all these imperfections and perfect you. He'll take all your interruptions and then he'll do a Holy Ghost thing with it. And then he'll take all of your inconveniences and all of a sudden you'll start seeing more convenience in your life. And then impossibilities will now become possible, Kathy. Possible. So Jacob wrestles with God. You can read this story in your own. And he fights him, and he's like wrestling and wrestling. And, and the angel, we don't know if it was the angel, the Lord. There's all kinds of theories on that one. And, and he said, hey, let me go. It's already morning, man. Come on. And then Jacob was like, no, I ain't letting you go, man, until you bless me. And, and he said, okay. And he, he can't rest. So the angel uh, popped his socket and is like, oh, okay. And, and, but, 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 but the... But the Lord saw something special in this Jacob that in the midst of this struggle that he was willing to seek him. See, it's hard to seek God when you're in the struggle. God says, seek me in the struggle, and you watch what you'll do. And the Bible says, and Jacob won. How could he win if he got his socket popped out? He won because he did something finding joy in him than trying to find happiness in something else. And then the Bible says that on that day, he said, you are no longer going to be Jacob. Jacob was known as to be a deceiver, uh, someone who wanted title. He says, you'll now be Israel. And what is Israel? You are now a prince of God. I'm changing your name now. He may not be changing your name, but you know what he's doing? But he's going to change you and he's going to change me. You'll always be Anusha, but you'll be a changed Anusha. He changes you. Your circumstance may not change, but you're changing in your circumstance. And you know what happens? It's pretty funny because it says then Jacob, when he left, he had a limp all the way till he was like 90-something years old. He had a limp. And, and you know what? It says that they knew that he had been face-to-face -face with God. See, your mark, your struggle, your pain is a mark of God's faithfulness that you're still alive and you made it. And that's where the cholo walk came out too. <laughs> that's, it said, it said he limped as he went. Bow your head, close your eyes. Father, I thank you for each and every single person here today. And I pray, change us. Put your hand on your heart. And you say, Jesus... I'm going to seek you with all my heart. I'm tired of being the problem. And I'm done with my issues. 
Help me, Jesus. Give me strength to overcome. Today, I surrender to you. I give you my heart. I give you my life. I give you my will. In Jesus' name I pray. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.